Hi, I'm John McGuire, founder and director of the Kinesiology Institute. Thank you for tuning into this video. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified when we post new content. And go to kinesiologyinstitute.com to learn more about applied kinesiology. Welcome to our class on Energy Kinesiology Fundamentals. I'm John McGuire and I've been actually teaching this material for probably over 35 years if I count. And it's just made so much of a difference in my life in the lives of those people that I've worked with. So we're going to get into a lot of the understanding of how it all works and then I'm going to give you some great techniques that you can apply and put right into your lifestyle and for you that are health professionals that you can integrate into your client sessions. I'll be talking more about my background and getting you understanding the, the whole essence of kinesiology in our first part here, but I would like to start with just some things that will help energize us and help us learn. See, learning is composed of four elements. See, hear, say, and do. So you're gonna be seeing me demonstrate techniques, you're gonna hear me explain the techniques, explain the theory behind the techniques, but then we're also going to have you say and do the techniques with others. Now the good thing is you'll have unlimited replays of this that you can watch over and over again, and then you can pause them. So if you're not practicing with a partner today, no problem. Just when you have someone come over or work with the, say, possible client or patient, you can watch the technique that you want to apply to them and pause it if you need to. So let's start with some brain integration because that's going to help us switch on both sides of the brain, which is key for learning. So we're going to start with just doing some cross crawl. That's where you bring your knee, if you're standing, up and hit with the opposite hand. Or you can do that sitting as well. In fact, you can even do it lying on your mattress in the morning before you get out of bed. And this is switching on both hemispheres of the brain. Now we're going to switch on the eyes. The eyes, we're going to take our thumb and go straight up in the midline and around in a circle, keeping the head still, watching the eye, the thumb with your eyes. Okay, and then the other hand, thumb up in the middle and around. So this integrates the visual cortexes, so you're using both sides of your brain for visual. And then we do both sides going up and around, up and around, both arms. Okay, great. Now the next thing we want to do is going to touch your navel, and while you're touching the navel, I'm going to have you rub the points called kidney 27, and then look back and forth with your eyes. <clears throat> kidney 27 is the point that is the kind of coordinator of circuits throughout the body to get information to where it needs to go. In fact, whenever you have the kidney 27s out, it's called neurological switching, which we'll talk about in a little bit. If you want, you can switch hands and then rub it with the other hand. So neurological switching is like confusion where you're not getting the right and left sides particularly together, such that if you're wanting to give directions, and you say, okay, you're going to turn right at the next corner, and you meant to say left, that would be neurological switching. So it just helps to switch on the brain. In fact, there's a whole system called educational kinesiology, and in that, they call these the brain buttons. Okay? So another thing we're going to touch just lightly on the forehead and take some slow, deep breaths. These are points called the frontal eminences. We're going to be working with them later today for clearing emotional stress, but it helps to get oxygen and blood flow to the brain as you breathe slowly and deeply. <sighs> Great. Okay, so now we're going to go into what we have in store today for our material. Remember, if you have any questions as we're going along here, what I want you to do is email support at kinesiologyinstitute.com and then we will get you the uh, answers to your questions. Okay, 
So here's what we're going to cover today. So the history of muscle testing and kinesiology has an interesting background. It's not that old in terms of uh, actual muscle testing skills. And what muscles, we're going to also see what muscle testing is and what it can be used for. Fascinating. Also, I'll give you a little of my background, how I, how I use muscle testing, both personally and professionally, and some simple ways to relieve pain and improve your health. Also, I'm going to show you how you can benefit from using muscle testing with kinesiology. So some really great stuff today. In this first session, particularly, we're going to show you how what ener the energy body is and the uh, paradigm of energy medicine. The lymphatic system and the neurolymphatic switches are also going to be covered, along with the neurovascular holding points and the acupuncture meridian system and a simple way to relieve and activate energy flow there and relieve pain and an easy and powerful emotional stress release technique. Okay, so we're gonna begin with the ear unrolling technique. This is a technique that I use a lot for myself as well as working with other people and I've taught many other people this technique. So here is how it works. You're gonna turn the head from one side to the other, just going like this, and see if one side's more stiff than the other. And Jana, do you notice one side stiffer or not? You do? Would you be willing to come up and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take a hold of the top of each ear and gently unroll it, but let's first see. So when you're turning from side to side, which way is stiffer? Okay, so when you turn this way, it's stiffer, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'll show you first by you turning towards the camera, and I'm going to unroll the ear by pulling on the, uh, the curved part of the ear and just pulling it up and out, like I'm making the ear bigger. And we'll watch out for that ear ring there too. And so you see how we're doing it here? Now, I'll let you do it on both ears actually, and if you like, you can actually turn to the side that's more stiff, like if I was doing it on myself, and I could unroll while I'm turning. So let's try that now, just to turn to this side and see if you get more movement as I'm unrolling here. Is it releasing, you getting yeah. more? Yeah, I see that. Fantastic, <laughs> isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay. Now we didn't do the other side, but turn your head back and forth and see what you got now. Is it more even or even better than the other side? It's better than the other side. Oh wow, okay. Well let's have you, and we'll both do it together now. And I'll show you on the big screen here, so you can watch it there too. So just one more sh shot here. I'm gonna have her zoom in and see what I'm doing here is I'm pulling the rolled over part of the ear and just unrolling it and widening it like that. And so you can do this about three times. So on yourself now, and you can do it on yourself as well. We'll both do it together. And see, it's easy to just unroll like that. So I'm just pulling up and widening it like that. So if you repeat that about two or three times, and then see if you've got more flexibility. Wow, I certainly did. Did you notice that, Shauna? Yeah. Great, well thank you, we'll bring you up in a little bit. So I uh, find this an easy technique to do, and here's some more reasons why I like to do this technique. If you notice, besides the range of motion improvement, it's a good energy booster to increase the flow of chi and act as an antennae for the meridian system. So it's good energizer throughout the day. In fact, if you're ever feeling, oh, I'm getting a little sleepy, just do those ear unrolling techniques because that is a very good way to boost your energy easily. I like to do it sometimes if I'm in line, um, say at a place like the post office or the DMV, though I don't have to do that much anymore. You end up getting a lot of benefit by just doing it, like, or if you're at a stoplight, just unroll your ears, great little thing to do. Now here's another benefit, is it improves jet lag, which is great. And it improves your ability to listen and to comprehend. 
So I think you'll find that this technique is a really good system, a really good way for you to get those benefits, okay? So we're gonna go back and look at our next uh, procedure here. I'm going to, um, we're gonna talk actually about muscle testing. Okay, now muscle testing is used in kinesiology as a language to communicate with the body's innate intelligence. And you get a wide variety of information about the state of the body and how things affect it. Now, I've, I've given you these PowerPoints also in an email, so you can download them and print out if you want to take notes. So we can use the muscle testing for several things here, and you'll see that it mentions we can use it to assess the structural imbalances and locate areas of stress in the physical body that can cause pain and dysfunction. We can also uncover energy imbalances in the meridian system and other systems such as the chakras and the auric fields. You can also find emotional stress and determine the best way to uh, release that emotional stress. Now you can also use it to determine which foods and supplements enhance our health and which deplete it, which I use quite often. And besides that, you can determine if our correction was effective or not which is something that for me is one of the best things about kinesiology is it's a way to understand did what we just do work. All right, now you see muscle testing. So muscle testing, that's what we're gonna be using and it's a way of testing uh, that we use gentle, gradually increasing pressure and by increasing the pressure uh, we're able to see does the person's arm stay in place or leg if we're doing it or does it move to a slight degree. So that's going to be a quality that you're going to develop. Now just to note, the more you test muscles, the better you get at it. But a lot of people are really good right in the beginning and others say, gee, it took a little longer. But don't be discouraged if you don't get it right away. Now the person being tested attempts to hold the position without their body moving. And then if they cannot hold the position, the muscle is considered weak or switched off. If they can hold it, we call it switched on. And so that's what we're looking for. Is it on or off? Okay. Now we can use muscle testing to find out where energy is blocked in the body and what's causing the blockage and what's the best way to remove the blockage. So it's a great system for you to understand what does the body need, where does it need it, and did our correction hold? Was it effective? Now we do not use muscle testing to diagnose or treat medical conditions. Now there are basically two types of kinesiology. There's academic kinesiology, and there's applied kinesiology in all of its branches. You may have heard of a person say, oh, my uncle or friend majored in kinesiology and got a degree in it in college. Well, that's academic kinesiology. So academic kinesiology is what we do to study the biomechanics and exercise physiology, and that again is taught at universities. So it studies the function of muscles and to assess their structural, physical, like strength and their neurological functioning. And it has no connection with meridians or energy fields, which is what we are doing in our work or any other holistic components. But in our structural kinesiology certification program, we actually teach the fundamentals of academic kinesiology. So you really understand all of the the functions of muscles, but we get into a lot more that academic kinesiology really doesn't address. Okay, so then we have applied kinesiology. Oh, there's one other thing. <laughs> Fitness instructors, athletic trainers, and sports conditioning coaches, they would take and study academic kinesiology. Now, Applied kinesiology uses muscle testing to assess the innate intelligence in the body and to find subconscious information 
that the conscious mind is not aware of. It's a form of biofeedback. So that's what we're going to be doing throughout this course, is getting biofeedback about what's going on in the body's energy systems, as well as learning where there's structural imbalances. Here's something to note. When the body's out of balance, it expresses it through weak muscles. And then if we correct it, it actually brings the body back into balance by doing the energy switches we're going to be working on. And when the energy in the systems in the body are in balance, symptoms go away naturally. So that's what you want to remember. If you balance the body, symptoms will go away naturally. Now, it's used by chiropractors and other natural health professionals. Now, let's go to the doctor who first developed muscle testing. His name was Dr. Robert Lovett, a medical doctor, an orthopedic surgeon, I believe, who originated muscle testing back in the early 1900s. He was a doctor in Massachusetts, in Boston. And first to understand what a muscle test is, it's you're bringing the origin and insertion of the muscle. Origin's on the non-moving bone, insertion is on the moving bone. So if it's the deltoids, I'm bringing the origin and insertion close together and then I'm pushing in a line of drive that brings it far apart. It could be the arm, the leg, the torso. It's always origin searching close together, line of drive to push them far apart. That's what a muscle test is. Now, Lovett used muscle testing to analyze disabilities that resulted from polio and nerve damage. And he published his findings in 1932, and that was the start of us understanding muscle testing. The next advancement was a couple, the married couple, Kendall and Kendall, Florence and Henry, they lived in the Baltimore area, and they, in 1949, published a book, Muscle Testing and Function. And they also worked primarily with polio victims, particularly children, and their work tremendously forwarded the profession of physical therapy, because that's what they were, physical therapists. And it contributed to our understanding of the biomechanics, because they went much further than Dr. Lovett did. So they developed a new field called academic kinesiology, which is that in-depth analysis of exact ways muscles move joints. Now, along comes Dr. George Goodhart, just what is that, 49, uh, 15 years later, and he, in 1964, picks up Kendall and Kendall's book, Muscle Testing and Function. So he figured out that you can do not only a structural assessment with muscle testing, but also energy flow. So he was the one that discovered, hey, energies can connect to muscles in the way of the acupuncture meridians. And so that's something not recognized in academic kinesiology. So he observed that the muscle strength and function could be immediately improved when certain neurological reflexes and other factors for the muscle were stimulated. That's what I'm going to be teaching you this weekend in this course. And that includes massage, acupressure, nutrition, and emotional stress release. Now he also found that a previously strong muscle could become weak when a stressor is introduced, such as an upsetting thought, an unhealthy food, an environmental stressor, uh, stressor or touching um, an area on the body where there's stress or dysfunction. So many systems grew out of AK, which is applied kinesiology, including Touch for Health. And I had the great fortune of working closely with John Thee, the developer of Touch for Health, and became a Touch for Health instructor in 1982. Now all these systems can be considered forms of energy kinesiology, separating that from academic kinesiology, because they recognize that everything is energy. So think about that. This is a profound understanding. Everything is energy. That means even the hard stuff, the table, uh, everything's vibrational. Like your body is just vibrational frequencies. In fact, Deepak Chopra says, if you go deep within at the subatomic layer of the body, it's as vast as intergalactic space. So we have lots and lots of space, but it's a denser form of energy, and that's how it manifests in the physical body. 
but just get that everything is energy. So when we're working with someone, we are affecting all aspects of their energy. From a holistic perspective, all parts of the person are interconnected. Everything affects everything else. All these systems of muscle testing, because there's many, many spur, uh, branches. In fact, Touch Your Health calls it the Touch for Health synthesis that John Thie created because he saw there's so many spin-offs of kinesiology, but they all are using the muscle testing to listen to the innate intelligence in the body that runs the body. And it determines what the source of a person's health challenge is. And then we can also use muscle testing to find out which holistic approach is the best way to bring the person back into balance and gain optimum health. So everything is energy, as we said, and we live in the center of a sea of energy. So all these energy factors are affecting you, everything around you. So we have the energy body we call the biofield along with our physical body that is just, as I mentioned, energy in a denser form. So everything affects our energy body and thus our health and quality of life. So we're very holistic in this approach to look at everything, our lifestyle, our environment, diet and supplements, thinking and emotions, relationships and communication. That's a very important factor. Also touch, which has a piezoelectric response which creates energy and affects the biofield. So it's a really important concept. See, when you touch something, especially if it's an acupuncture meridian point or acupressure point, it's like creating an electrical spark that then affects the energy body. So that's why massage is so helpful because just touch itself affects the energy body profoundly especially when you touch the right spot. And that's what we're gonna find in this course is how to find the exact spot that is the switch that will create an energy flow that brings the body totally into balance. Okay, so how you can benefit from using kinesiology? Well, you can correct musculoskeletal issues such as muscle spasms, aches and pains, joint inflammation, a range of motion problems, headaches and back pain. So in this course, we're gonna be covering a lot of ways to do that. This is the time we're giving you an overview of everything, then from here on out, we're gonna be really getting into techniques. Now you also improve digestion and elimination. I had a client once and I was doing some energy balancing, muscle balancing with her um, hips. And we found that uh, she said, you know, my chronic diarrhea has cleared up since you started working on me. In fact, you'll see that when you start using this, people will say other symptoms cleared up that they didn't even tell you about because when you balance the body in the energy body, everything, as I mentioned, can clear up. In fact, remember that symptoms often will go away naturally by using this work. Now again, we're not replacing medicine. This isn't a way to say, well, you don't need, say, conventional uh, medicine because there's always places where we're like the first aid and if something's not clearing up many times they need to be referred or they they need to check to see if there's something more involved you know so we're like first aid to keep the body in balance and let keeping yourself tuned up to peak health because what sometimes happens is people will end up waiting until their body falls apart, just like if you drove your car for 120,000 miles, never getting a tune-up, and then say, oh my gosh, the car fell apart. We like to stay tuned up, so we use these techniques every day. So improving digestion elimination is one key. So we also find that we can discover the optimum diet in balancing body chemistry, which we'll be doing some tomorrow. Now, you can also improve sleep and greater calmness and peacefulness. I've seen where clients after a session will tell me the next day, gosh, I haven't slept so well in 20 years. Okay, we also boost energy levels and remove fatigue. Okay, so there's another aspect. It enhances psychological balance and clearing upset, upsetting emotions and traumas. 
And I've seen amazing things happen with that. And we're going to get into that a little later today. But in our certification program for the psychological kinesiology, we show in-depth techniques that go into balancing the energy body from a psychological perspective. So we also accelerate learning and educational development. In fact, we did a little bit of that earlier. There's a whole field that spun out from this called educational kinesiology, where we tune up the brain for peak performance. Now we also optimize sports and dance performance with this material. And I've worked with many top athletes and some of my graduates from my certification program have worked with world-class athletes, top uh, Olympic athletes and even world record holders by doing these procedures. So it's great for that. And I've also worked with dancers and they just love it because it keeps their body tuned up for peak, peak performance. Now we also can enhance job performance and productivity. So you'll find when you're doing this work, you can think clear and be more productive. And then one of my favorites is we can promote spiritual development. There's a book called Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. And he really gets into that and how we're, we're transcending the ego and helping us to get to higher levels of consciousness by clearing away things that hold us back. Okay, so the innate intelligence runs the body. That's a very key principle within kinesiology. We all possess this innate intelligence that knows exactly how to keep us healthy. Now, the intelligence is connected to the universal intelligence that pervades all things and sustains life in the universe. When you experience physical and emotional symptoms or disease, it's the way you are living, eating, and thinking. Write that down, L-E-T. How you're living, how you're eating, and how you're thinking that's not allowing this innate wisdom to carry out its function to create optimum health. So that's the key. We always wanna consider the whole person rather than, well, I'm just gonna rub the right points and fix you up. What is it that they're in, in their lifestyle? They can be they're not sleeping enough, um, they're not taking enough time off to relax, or they're not getting enough adequate exercise. And then eating, so key eating foods that are rich in bioavailable energy, not highly processed foods and refined sugars and carbs that are void of energy. And then thinking. Thinking is actually the most important. When you're focusing on positive and feel good thoughts and living in your purpose and your passion, it's tremendously helpful for your health. And when you're worrying, when you're holding anger and resentment, it's tremendously detrimental to your health. So these are the factors we're all putting together and considering, so that way we can allow the innate intelligence to carry out its job. So in this course, you're gonna learn how to do muscle testing to tap into that inner innate wisdom and get the direction as to what changes we need to make and then restore ourselves back to optimum health. Okay, so we mentioned a little bit about these energy fields. Well, the primary ones we work with are the acupuncture meridians. And they're invisible channels which, through which flows bioelectrical energy, or also known as chi. So when you hear me mention the word chi, that's what we got. And it runs along the surface of the body. Each meridian is related or named after an organ or a function. So you'll see here we have lung and large intestine, kidney and bladder, liver and gallbladder, spleen and stomach, heart and small intestine, and then two that relate to functions, specifically triple warmer and circulation sex. So the triple warmer regulates heat in the three body cavities, relates to your thyroid, your adrenals, your thymus gland. Circulation sex relates to governing that circulation of fluids get to the proper place at the proper time and it also governs the uh, reproductive organs. Now, muscle organ meridian relationship. This is a key element of kinesiology. Goodhart discovered that every muscle in your body is associated with an acupuncture meridian in, and an organ. I'll give you an example of this. The small intestine is related to the quadriceps. 
And so if you have challenges, which many people do with like leaky gut in their small intestine, their quadricep muscle will test weak. That's the muscle that brings the leg up and you just be pushing it down like this. <laughs> so that muscle is often weak, I find, on people because so many people have issues with their small intestine. There's muscles related to the adrenal glands, such as the sartorius and gracilis that are medial knee stabilizers. People often with medial knee pain have adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal glands are the ones that help us to deal with stress. And when people are under a lot of stress, they'll often have knee problems, as well as other things that can happen there. Okay, so we have the acupuncture meridian sedation point. When it's stimulated, an associated muscle will become weak when retested. And I'm gonna bring Jana back up and she will then help us see how that phenomena actually exists. Okay, so Jana, let's have you bring your arm out here to the side. Let's go right here, there we go. And I'm gonna push straight down and hold as I push. Great, now this is the deltoid, the middle deltoid muscle that relates to the lung meridian. Now there's a point on the lung meridian that's right at the elbow. If you look, the, the lung meridian flows from here right out to the thumb. So there's a point right here, it's the sedation point. So if I touch that and press again, hold as I push and see what happens. <laughs> okay, now I take the hand off the sedation point and hold again, look at that. So that sedates the lung meridian and the muscle related to the lung meridian goes weak. Now I'll touch another point here. This is the, in fact, I can touch it while I'm testing, the tonification point. Hold as I push. Hey, you see how strong that is? So now that is the point that would strengthen it if the muscle was actually weak. So those are switches that show that each muscle is related to an acupuncture meridian. Okay, thank you. We'll see you soon. So that's, uh, how Goodhart largely figured this out is they started seeing, hmm, there's a connection here. In fact, here's the first one he, he figured out, is that he saw that people with thyroid problems would stand like this. They'd have uh, their hands in like this, rather than be to the side like this. He would see people with th thyroid at least would have one hand turned in, or both, like that. Now the muscle that rotates the arm out is called the teres minor muscle. So teres minor is uh, related to the thyroid. And then he noticed that when he stimulated things that would help the, the uh, meridian related to thyroid, which is triple warmer, that their posture would improve and that the muscle would strengthen. So that's how he figured it out. And so they started doing a little, uh, some sedation of each of the meridians, and then they'd see what muscles switch off when we sedate a point. And that's how they can figure out these muscles relate to the stomach meridian, these muscles relate to the spleen meridian, these muscles relate to the heart meridian, etc. And so that's where uh, they started developing this in the middle 60s, and it just grew and grew. So it's a, uh, a system that f I find gets you a lot of valuable information that you're able to then put into practice. Okay, back to our diagram here. We're going to see that an organ, when it's under stress, the muscle can become inhibited and will test weak upon manual muscle testing. So as I mentioned, if your stomach or say small intestine or under stress, there's muscles directly connected to those and they'll test weak. Now your biochemistry affects your physical body and your mood. This triad of health is something that Goodhart, when I studied with him, kept emphasizing. And that's again the beauty of this system is we're looking at all aspects of being, particularly these three, chemical, mental, emotional, and structural. So think about this. Biochemistry affects your physical body and your mood. So do you ever eat, or maybe you drank too much, or <laughs> you ate some really bad food and you just felt like the next day depressed, or your body just felt achy and you couldn't move very well, or you were in pain? Well, when your biochemistry is balanced, you feel great physically and emotionally. So when you're eating really well, and you're drinking a lot of water, and you're finding um, 
you know, the, the foods that are rich in bio and bioavailable and life force, you just feel good in both your mood and your physical body. Now, if your hormones or transmitters, neurotransmitters are imbalanced, your psychological state is affected. In our certification program, we have a whole component called biochemical kinesiology. We actually show you how you can test to see which hormones as well as which neurotransmitters in your brain are out of balance and then energetically bring them back into balance. And so there's a book called The Mood Cure where it was by a psychologist named Julia Ross who ended up discovering, hmm, you know, I'm counseling these people, but when I really help them with their nutrition, psychologically they feel so much better. So it's a very good book, I recommend that. Now nutritional deficiencies and high levels of heavy metals can cause physical problems such as inflammation, muscle cramps, pain and dysfunction, as well as psychological disorders. So that side of the triangle affects the other two very tremendously. But here we go, now the mental. I said that's most important. Your thoughts and emotions affect your biochemistry and your physical body. So when you think a thought, it stimulates a gland in your brain called the hypothalamus. And within the brain, that triggers an, automatic, an autonomic response, meaning without you doing anything, it triggers either stress hormones or happy, healthy hormones. So it's the stressful, is called the fight or flight response, releasing those stress hormones. So that's real important to keep a monitor on your thoughts. And when you notice yourself thinking a negative thought, switch to a positive one because that then responds with happy, healthy hormones. A state of homeostasis is created. Okay, now the third section of the triangle is structural. And when your structure uh, and your posture is in balance, it affects your emotional state. And when it's out, it can affect uh, that as well. In fact, do this for a second. I want you just to drop your shoulders, drop your head down, and don't breathe very deeply. Notice your mood. Now, take a deep breath in, bring your shoulders back, sit erect, stretch the right side of your mouth towards your right ear, left side of your mouth towards your left ear, just shifting your posture. Breathe deep, see if you feel different emotionally. You probably do. <laughs> So it's something to be aware of that our state of our physical body is actually the easiest way to shift your emotional state, but it also affects your biochemistry. In fact, they found that probably the best thing for depression as well as for longevity in your biochemistry being balanced is doing brisk walking, just getting out and moving and exercising, having your physical body in motion. Now, when you're in physical pain, you create stress hormones and have emotional upset. You all know that. And think about this. When your posture is balanced, you feel your best emotionally and your biochemistry is affected. So that's one of the benefits to what we're doing in kinesiology is when we're balancing the posture, people walk out saying, God, I feel so much better. Okay, now I'm gonna share a little bit about my background. Yeah, see, when I was uh, younger, I had tremendous challenges with my health. I was, um, had back pain, I had digestive problems, I had um, depression, I had really bad <laughs> constipation, and I was a mess. So my mother would take me to various doctors and they would do all the tests on me. In fact, one doctor, an orthopedic surgeon said, oh, I had a bone defect. And so he just said, don't do any gym classes because if I exerted my body too much, I'd be in great pain. I couldn't even walk more than a mile without being severely <laughs> in, in pain. So I got into music, which was great, but I just missed out on all the you know, fun with the athletes and that. So I just couldn't work out, right? So my mom took me to one doctor about my stomach problems and the doctor never asked my mother what I ate. He did all his tests. He said, there's nothing wrong with Johnny. It's all in his head. That's what he told my mom. <laughs> okay, so then I move into a natural foods co-op. This is in uh, Oberlin, at Oberlin, Ohio, in Oberlin College. 
And I didn't know what natural foods were. In fact, I was taught the four food groups that if you don't eat meat, you could die. So I was really suspicious. But anyway, I said, well, I, it was the cheapest place to live on campus, so I said, I'll give it a shot. What I noticed was that all my health problems cleared up. In fact, while I was there, I also started doing meditation and yoga. And between the natural diet, the meditation and the yoga, I felt great. All my aches and pains, my depression, my gastrointestinal problems, gone. Now, I go back home on break and I eat the way I always ate at home. You know, mom's good cooking. And I go, oh my gosh, I'm starting to feel sick again. <laughs> so after break, I go back to school, it all clears up. I finally figured it out. Oh, how I was living, eating, and thinking were causing my health challenges. So from that point on, I pretty much kept um, in, involved in, in fact, that's where I changed my major and ended up getting a degree in holistic health. So from there, I started doing a massage and body work, I became a massage therapist, and I did a system called postural integration. And postural integration is similar to Rolfing, and I would do these 10 session programs. It was very structurally focused. But I also looked at every other technique I could. I studied shiatsu, I studied polarity therapy, um, various forms of massage, got a big toolbox. But I didn't know what to do when. And having a degree in holistic health, I really wanted a holistic system. Well, then I discovered Touch for Health and Applied Kinesiology. And it just fell right into my lap. I was basically teaching a yoga class where a chiropractor at the end of class said, hey, I wanna show you something. And he showed me a muscle test and he did similar to what I just showed on Jana. He did something on my body and the arm totally went weak. And then he did something else that was totally strong. I said, wow, what is this? He said, well, come to my office and we'll demonstrate it for you. So I, I went and they had a, a whole demonstration on Applied Kinesiology and Touch for Health. And I thought, wow, this is great, I gotta study this. Well, about a year later, I was working in a chiropractor's office and they said, hey, Dr. Anderson is going up to study with George Goodhart for an entire year in his certification program for applied kinesiology. Would you like to go? And I go, wow, what an opportunity. So I ended up studying with Goodhart and integrating this into my massage practice. And the results were phenomenal. I found that my practice within just a few months tripled and I had people coming from long distances to get this work and got tremendous results. I was able to handle very difficult cases. So I became a Touch for Health instructor right at the end of my year-long training with Goodhart and then started teaching around the country and eventually moved from Akron, Ohio to Pasadena where I became the program director of the Touch for Health Foundation, taught all over the United States and actually now have taught in about 15 different countries. What a privilege and honor that was. So from there, and I was also working as John Thie's chiropractic assistant. So I got to see John and how he worked in his office and help him. That was a tremendous experience. Then from there, I ended up in um, around 1992, I developed my own kinesiology program. I left the Touch for Health and in, in the Touch for Health faculty because I saw Touch for Health is great and I really love it but they weren't focusing on how to integrate it into a client session. And as a clinician and taking all good heart's work and all the best to touch for health, I was putting a program together that said, here's how you can use it in a, a clinical setting to get great results. And so I started teaching my program again around 1992. And then in 1994, I had the great honor and privilege of joining Anthony Robbins Life Mastery Faculty. And so there I would teach every year. It was generally in Hawaii. Um, now it's on video, but I've been teaching there since 1994, what, 22 years now. And amazing uh, feedback I've had from the students that I've taught and a, a myriad of conditions that, and uh, health challenges that have cleared up often instantly. And so it's, it's many times very easy, simple techniques. And that's what I teach in Anthony's, Anthony Robbins' program. So that gives you a little uh, of my background. And let's see if I've got a couple other things here. I wanna show you uh, uh, one little gem here. <laughs> and this is the love of my life. This is Michelle, my 12 year old daughter, about to turn 13. And uh, it's great because we've been using kinesiology like since she was a few days old. I would rub her neural lymphatic points, which I'll be teaching you in a, in a little bit. And um, 
and keeping her healthy. And it's amazing how healthy she is. And uh, she actually started muscle testing me when she was around four or five. I taught her how to do it. Come on, push daddy's arm. And then I'd find out what I'm teaching you this weekend, what was out in my body. And then I would correct it and have her test it again. And, and it was amazing how much she was able to help me from an uh, early age. So she's now an adept muscle tester and actually shares it some with her friends. And you know, we find out what foods are best to eat uh, when she has a health challenge, which isn't very often. We often know right away what to do to clear it up. So that's something to be aware of that when you're doing this work, use it with your family and have them testing and balancing you and your friends. It's really easy to do. All right, let's see. I think we're about ready for one more slide we're gonna look at, and that's the summary. So here's, and then we'll end our session. It'll take about a 10 minute break. So we use muscle testing in kinesiology to find energy blockages in the body. So when you have an energy blockage, you're able to know where it is and what holistic procedure will bring it back into balance. That's what we're able to discover. And then we test the muscles to confirm that the energy blockage has been cleared. Here's how Goodhart put it. Assess the need, supply the need, and observe the result. That's what it boils down to. We use this wonderful system to find out what's the person need. And so we make that assessment and then we deliver what they need, which you're gonna be learning about throughout this course, whatever techniques or changes in diet or perhaps uh, lifestyle, thinking, emotional stress release, we give them that. And then we retest and observe the result. One is, is the muscle now strong that was weak before? And how do they feel? Like we show, showed with Jana here, where we did a little technique, and often you don't have to do the muscle testing. We're gonna show you that, especially in how to integrate it in a massage session later. But you, you know, observe that, oh, after we did a technique, the range of motion improves, or the person's energy lifts up. So you're always checking both muscles and how do they feel now. So if you have any questions, email them to support at kinesiologyinstitute.com.